Okay, uh, we are going back to the films now and a film called Baghead. And uh, what would you say if you could speak to loved ones who have passed? Here's a clip. I'm the solicitor at your father's estate. My dad owned this place. I don't have any memories with him. This is all I have right now. If you're watching this, then I'm already dead. This property comes with a special tenant. You're the one thing that stands between her and the outside world. Yeah, so I've seen Baghead. I saw it this afternoon. Andy, you've seen it. Uh, anybody else seen it, Emma? I didn't manage no, to get to it in the end. Okay, I cancelled so... my screening. Oh, no. oh no. <laughs> Shame. Weren't you blessed? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you were so lucky. <laughs> yeah, well... I used exactly the same intro there for Baghead as I did for all of us strangers, you might have noticed, because we're in curiously familiar territory here <laughs> in uh, being able to communicate with dead people. Uh, this film, though, is much more mainstream, bog standard horror than all of us strangers ever could be. It's most strikingly similar, in fact, to the Australian horror from uh, last year, uh, Speak to Me, because yeah. that. It's virtually the same plot. There is a, a woman stuck in a basement, some mystical creature that if you give her something belonging to a person who's uh, passed, that person will then reappear and re-inhabit Baghead and talk to you. But you've only got a very limited time to do it before things go awry, very much like Talk To Me was. So it's almost an exact plot of Talk To Me. Uh, I mean... It, there's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's quite nicely filmed, I thought. Uh, it's done at Babelsberg Studios and nice sets, uh, nice atmosphere to the film. And the acting is good. There's, uh, Freya Allen plays the young girl there at the heart of the movie. Jeremy Irvine, um, ex of Warhorse and Mamma Mia, uh, plays one of the uh, customers, shall we say, who wants to contact somebody. Ruby. Barker is her friend, and Peter Mullen, you saw there on the video, uh, plays the father. So the acting's good. It just wasn't remotely scary. <laughs> well, not for me anyway. Everything that happened I could see was going to happen in terms of the jump scares. And as such, there was nothing there that kind of made me go, whoa. I wish I, I wish I wasn't watching this on my own in the dark, which indeed I was at this particular showing this afternoon. No, absolutely nothing. There was quite a nice twist to the story at the end, which in, in some ways there was a nice twist at the end of Talk To Me as well, I thought. And there was quite a nice twist to the story that happens in the final reel of this film, which I didn't see coming. So, um, yeah, that lifted it up a little bit for me. Andy, any other comments on this? The biggest horror about this is, is it's not a horror. Mm. I mean, it markets itself as a horror film, and there's no there's no sense of horror. There's no sense of tension. There's no there's nothing to make you jump. There's nothing to scare you. There's nothing to make you uneasy. I agree about the twist in the final reel, which I did not see coming, and I thought that actually was quite good. Mm. However, what worries me is that a new horror franchise that we really don't need or want has been born bearing in mind the ending because i can see this going down the same sort of road as the conjuring series and the, and you know the nuns some films in particular i thought it was okay i mean i thought it was okay you know when was the last time you saw a horror film that really made you go jump out your skin that really scared you that, mm. for me it was mother which goes Never. back yeah. before the pandemic. And I saw that three times at the cinema I saw... and was unnerved at my skin every time yeah this no, when was the last time we had a really mm. proper, I remember, genuinely scary, I remember that, creepy horror film? That Rebecca Hall film, The Night House. I think that was quite well It was well okay, done. but, you know, you look at things like uh, the swimming pool one the other week, and, you you know, what are, they, what are these writers thinking? They're not scaring us. These are just cheap horror movies that are being churned out and, and, and really are not doing great business. How these people are staying in business is beyond me. Yep. And, and really not doing the job as advertised. And I just worry for the genre at the moment but if there's going to be another one i'm not exactly going to be rushing to see it no yeah score out of 10 i was kind of in the low figures until that little 
twist in the ending. So in the end, I gave this a, a five out of ten. Well, for, because of the twist in the ending, I gave it a six. Six. Okay, so that's yeah. a flickering dream score of yeah. five point five. For Let's have some decent horror films, please. <laughs> Baghead, which uh, which does make it a mid, <laughs> horror, I'm afraid. So you might want to reconsider, Emma. <laughs> Let's uh, let's Everyone take a look. Give it a ten, then we'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Could be sore X and Mean Girls all over again next week. 